When you think about World War One, is this what you think of? A British Tommy in a trench, probably somewhere in France. Much of what you know is not as it seems. So what do you think you know about World War I? It was violent and it was vicious, but it's got plenty of competitors for bloodiness. It wasn't the bloodiest in terms of outright numbers killed, and it wasn't the bloodiest in terms of proportion either. At least for Britain. An entire generation was affected, but it wasn't wiped out. 89% of British soldiers survived the war. But that's not to say World War I was in any way insignificant. It was big. There was fighting in Europe, Africa and Asia. There are Commonwealth war graves in 96 different countries, on every continent bar Antarctica. This was a truly global conflict. So, what else do you know? Not necessarily. The privileged classes weren't protected from the slaughter. In fact, a greater proportion of public schoolboys were killed or injured than their working class contemporaries. It's been days now, and you change your mind again. It feels like years, and I can tell how time can bend your ideas. Eaton alone lost a thousand former pupils, 20% of those who served. This was because one of the deadliest roles on the front line was that of a junior officer. And the boys go on and They were first into the firing line as they led their men over the top. It was said that during the fiercest fighting on the Somme, an ordinary soldier could expect to last three months before becoming a casualty. A junior officer, just six weeks. And even if you were older and didn't serve as a junior officer yourself, you could still be affected. The war touched everyone. Officers and privates, posh and poor alike. Trenches were a central feature of the First World War. There were trenches on every front, in every terrain. In the Italian Alps, there were even trenches dug into the ice. But soldiers didn't live in them full time. British soldiers didn't even live in them the majority of the time. Behind the lines, troops dug trenches and latrines, trained and played sports. Some even put on plays or wrote and published their own newspapers. But this wasn't about fun and games, it was about morale. The top brass knew that you couldn't keep men in conditions like this continually and expect them to be an effective fighting force. 
And so, soldiers busied themselves whilst waiting for their turn, all within hearing distance of the artillery. Finally, what about one of the war's most enduring stories? There's little evidence that it actually happened. There was an unofficial truce in 1914 across large sections of the Western Front. The guns stopped for one day, in some places, up to a week. And newspapers back home had a field day. But the story of the football match is contentious. Contemporary news reports revolve around hearsay. Many did want to play. Some tried to arrange a match, but fighting resumed and got in the way. If some battalions did manage to play, it was the odd kickabout with a makeshift ball. But that shouldn't diminish the true story of the Christmas truce. What we know for definite is that many German and British soldiers met in no man's land, swapped gifts and photos of their families, even cut each other's hair. They sang carols and helped to bury each other's dead. And in many cases, it seemed to be the Germans who started it. They lit their decorations on Christmas Eve and called out to the British not to shoot. Nothing on this scale was to happen the following year. By then, both sides were under strict orders not to fraternize, to answer any advances with lead. The Germans sang Christmas carols again, but in many places they were drowned out by the sound of British machine guns. So, what do you know now about World War I? World War I wasn't unique in its bloodiness. It wasn't simply a protected upper class sending a generation of workers to their deaths. Trenches weren't the sum total of a soldier's life. And Christmas 1914 was much more than a football match, if there even was a football match. Myths are incredibly powerful, but they rarely reveal the full picture. The truth is that history is never as straightforward or as convenient as the myth would have us believe.